The Center for Weight and Health is one of the only obesity prevention research centers in the nation to focus primarily on environmental and policy solutions to preventing pediatric overweight. Thank you for the opportunity to provide input on the reauthorization of the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, particularly in regards to preventing child obesity. The WIC program offers us an unparalleled opportunity to prevent the development of nutrition-related health problems at the most critical stages of life, during pregnancy, postpartum, breastfeeding, and in early childhood and infancy. As you've heard today, it is critical too because child obesity oftentimes begins very early in life. Obesity prevention strategies must therefore begin at a very, very young age. We have a golden opportunity here to position federal child nutrition programs to prevent obesity, and if we do not, this generation of children may be the first in our nation's history to live a shorter life than their parents. I offer the following four suggestions for strengthening WIC nutrition services to better address child obesity. My first recommendation is to increase time for nutrition education in WIC. Making healthful choices for one's family requires a knowledge base, yet many parents have minimal or no education in nutrition. I myself had to go to graduate school before I learned what to eat. Optimal nutrition education requires sufficient time at WIC appointments. How can this be achieved? First, ensure that there is adequate funding for the nutrition services and administration portion of the WIC appropriation. Second, redirect time from time-consuming processes like certification activities to education. Currently, states have the option to certify infants and breastfeeding women for one year at a time. However, the eligibility period for children who make up half to two-thirds of those enrolled in WIC remains every six months. Allowing annual certification for children would allow WIC staff to redirect their focus from paperwork to the provision of much needed guidance on obesity prevention. My second recommendation is to increase targeted funding for breastfeeding promotion. The values of breastfeeding are numerous and well documented in the scientific literature. Breastfeeding not only reduces infectious disease and chronic disease, but it also helps reduce the risk of obesity. WIC is a proven national leader in breastfeeding promotion. In California, for example, rates of breastfeeding have increased by as much as 11% in WIC agencies that have implemented the Breastfeeding Peer Counseling Program with special funds appropriated by Congress. Evaluation of this peer counseling is important so that we can identify ways to adapt it to different populations in different settings. Yet funds are currently not allocated for evaluation purposes. Moreover, current funding for peer counseling is not adequate to ensure that all WIC mothers who need it get it. My third recommendation is to coordinate nutrition messaging across federal nutrition assistance programs. Among the child nutrition programs, WIC is the leader in nutrition education. A key way to strengthen WIC is to align the nutrition messages in all federal food programs, particularly the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program and the Child Care Food Program, which serve similar populations. Without this, WIC messages are more likely to get diluted and lost in what you know is the daily barrage of alternative messages we more oftentimes hear for less nutritious foods. My fourth and final recommendation is to increase funding to support WIC evaluation and outcomes research. To ensure that WIC continues to provide the most nutritious packages of foods possible within its budgetary constraints, Congress should protect the scientific integrity of the new food packages and require periodic reassessments. The WIC food packages should be reevaluated at a minimum of every 10 years to reflect important changes in what we know about science and nutrition and updates in the National Nutrition Guidelines. Lastly, I urge you to increase funding for evaluations that will help us build the evidence base for cost-effective and transferable WIC best practices that demonstrate promise in preventing obesity. We need to discard what isn't working and strive to optimize the return from WIC's proven investment in nutrition services for the millions of at-risk families with young children who participate in WIC. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you these comments on strategies to strengthen the invaluable WIC program. Mm -hmm.